Before we hopped into the car, there's a bunch of fans around the dugout calling your name. You got like probably 10 different nicknames. And then there's Clint, of course. What do you want to be called? Like, what do you like best? You know, I, I know everyone has embraced the, the Red Thunder thing and, and that's awesome, but it's not, that's not my favorite one. I mean, I, I, I want something that describes me more. It's something a little more tough, but I mean, for the time being, I mean, I get called Rojo. Uh, you know, people called me Wildling on the team for the, the red hair guy in Game of Thrones. But I just want something that that is a little more off the elementary sound. And and I want something that fits me more. So, I mean, I, I, I don't know. You got any nicknames? You, have you heard anything? I like Rojo. Rojo's good. I think with how much I try to incorporate the color red into my, my everyday outfit or, or what I'm wearing on the field is, I want something to do with red in it. Yeah. You know? So being from Georgia, what are some of the things that you grew up on that you kind of like bring with yourself? You know, I think family. Family oriented things have been one of the, the biggest things that, you know, has kind of been concreted into my, my everyday lifestyle. My parents and I talk on the phone every day. I talk to my sister. You know, I, I brought my cats with me. They feel like my own family away from home. I don't know what it is, but you strike me more as a dog person than a cat person, but you have two cats. You can blame my mom for that, man. <laughs> she, my, we have one dog at her house and I don't know how many cats. She would be upset if I said the number, but it's, it's a large number of cats. So, but, but they're outside cats, you know, she, she calls it a cat motel, you know? She keeps, what do you mean, they don't actually live at your house? She, she put off a part in the basement that she, they, they built in, kind of like a, it's just an indoor place for them to go and sleep at night, but you know, we have a lot of acres at our house and, and they run around a lot, so they, they just enjoy going outside and, and they're wild, man. So, and with how many she has, it's best <laughs> that they're not all in the house. I think she keeps a couple in there just for, her favorite ones get to stay in there. That's Does anybody call her the cat lady? She's actually got a, a sign uh, that's hanging in our garage, or her garage at home, that says like, Cat Lover's Lane. So she's definitely a cat lover, but you know, I think that people call her, call her a cat lady too, or behind her back all the time. <laughs> There's no one that fits the mold better, better than she does. Was that your first pet growing up a cat? Yeah, yeah, you know, I had a dog. Her name was Abby, she was a black lab whenever we were younger, but and we had a black cat named Rocky that he passed away at the age of 17. You know, he was around from the, the get-go for me, so, you know, she's she's definitely instilled the the love for cats in my lifestyle, because I, I, I don't, my dad's a big hunter, and my mom's an animal lover in general, so it's, it's, a, it's a funny dynamic at the house, man. The house is divided for sure. What about a hamster, did you ever have one of those? I did, man. I had hamsters. I had a guinea pig, and I wish I could save every animal out there. That's something that definitely, you know, is a soft spot in my heart. It's just making sure the animals are always taken care of. So, you know, people might not get that because of the persona that I give off, but man, I'm, a, I'm an animal lover at heart for sure. Is it safe to say that you're not finished with just like the two cats? Like you think you probably get more? Dude, no, no, I can't. I can't get more. If I would have got like three or four at once, that would have been fine. But I don't think I'll add to the group because they get territorial, and they're and they're boys. And and I know from experience, whenever my mom would bring another one home, they they like to mark their territory, so they they definitely will start spraying in the house. And it, it just becomes a nuisance for the cat that came in. I don't want to put another cat, make him feel like the the black sheep in the crowd, man. What's a chill sesh for Clint Frazier? So, main priority is food for me. That, I consider that a hobby, finding new places to eat. So I love Ocean's Prime. Just got involved in Fresh Kitchen down here. Um, love Green Lemon. You know, I'm trying to hit all the spots that everyone talks about. So first it's, it's what are we eating? After that, you know, come home, play with the cats, let them outside and get them into their natural habitat, but I am in love with the show Friends. I have a movie collection that I started. I don't rent, I buy, I'll go back and watch them, I'll do it on the Apple TV. That's the biggest thing, man, is I, I've gotten into watching movies a lot, like all kinds of, all kinds of movies. So it's just cool for me to just see what's out there. I mean, I, I, I feel like I've lived in this like introvert lifestyle where I do the same routine every day, see the same people every day, 
and I wanted to expand it. So I've tried to get out of my, my comfort zone and, and go out and do some stuff and then start watching movies that I didn't think I would watch. So, I mean, I, I'm definitely trying different things this year. You watch Friends, Luis Severino, Tyler Wade. I'm hooked on Friends. Dude, it's, it's never gonna go away. And the thing is, like, I don't think no matter what time you were born in, you can't watch that show. You know what I mean? Like, I hope my kids one day watch that show because that is, it's one of the best shows out there. I mean, I, I think I ran a Twitter poll this off season trying to see if they thought Friends was one of the top five movies of all time. And it, 51% it, of them said yes, I think. It's fun trying to figure out what character you think that you fit best. And I don't know, I don't really know which one I would fit most. Right what now. season are you on? Oh, I finished it already, man. Oh. Like, I watch every, every show, man. I mean, I, Stranger Things, The Newsroom, that's a great one. It's a way to pass the time not being involved in something physical. You know, like every day we, we go to the field and we do so much work, man, and it's just, it's a way to decompress and just kinda, I mean, it makes you laugh. I'm, I'm trying to surround myself around a lot of positive things right now, you know? So that show is nothing but positivity. And you know, whenever I get to New York, I've, I've, I wanna check places off, I wanna go I want to go see the apartment mm -hmm. that they were at. You know, I want to go to the coffee shop. Like, I know Central that- Central Perk? Yeah, but I was heartbroken to find out that Central Perk is not a real coffee shop. It is actually the studio that they made in the, it, it, it really upset me. <laughs> and, it, and to find out that in Monica's apartment, like on the other side of the wall is where they do Central Perk. That upset me. Yeah. Like. It, I got, I mean, I feel like I'm one of their friends. No pun. When season 10 ends, mm -hmm. I feel bad for whoever just finished that one because it's it's like a part of you's gone. You don't really, what what show do you go to next is the thing because that's the best one out there in my opinion. So yeah. I, I just think any anything that, you know, us as entertainers or ball players do to, to kind of have an outlet away from the field, mm -hmm. Is, is good and you know if, if guys are watching that show you know kudos to whoever produced it you know it seems like everyone loves that show that's how I feel about art you just sit down and you got a, a canvas and you can do whatever you want with it and just kind of space out almost like when you listen to music you know oh dude yeah speaking of art man I, I've I enjoy going and looking at art too I haven't actually bought my first piece but I I, I was in Scottsdale looking at like a, it was like a popsicle stick that was like I don't even know, dude. It was like a real popsicle stick on a on a board, and I almost bought it. It was like a thousand dollars. I was like mesmerized by it. But I, when I think of a big purchase, I always try to think, what would my mom say? And if I bought a thousand dollar popsicle stick, dude, like she would be like, my neck. What? So your mom would have been like, we could have gotten ten cats with that money. Oh. More than that, man. They're like twenty-five dollars at that at PetSmart. <laughs> you could get way more, man. Like, I, I've almost. I was at PetSmart the other day with my mom, and we bought a cat perch. And there was three cats that were on sale for twenty-five dollars. And I was about to go to the front desk and pay the twenty-five dollars for all of them, so someone that maybe couldn't afford it could come in, and then the cat's free. You know, I almost paid their adoption fees because it's sad seeing them caged up. So, you know, I, I want to give them a home, but, you know, they'll all find their place at some point. The thing about cats, though, is, you know, like I was talking to Bird the other day, you know, he's got Mr. Delicious and there's automatic cat feeders out there. You know, thank God someone out there made an automatic cat feeder because I'm, I'm good once I get that. We can go on a road trip and and get after it. That's the hard thing about the profession that you know some of us are in is you you miss out on so much that your friends get to do to do. You know, like we're gone for eight nine months out of the year while everyone else is still back home. We can't get dogs. Maybe you know it could be a hard lifestyle in your your relationship, your family, your your kids. Like you miss out on some things. So you know, in a lot of ways, you know, there's things that I crave that my friends have and there's things that I have that my friends crave about us so it's everyone wants a piece of a lifestyle that they can't have so it's uh it's nice to have you know the flexibility to be able to have two cats though what do you think your boys would have said if you bought that thousand dollar popsicle dude I, I had one of them with me he wanted me to get it <laughs> he 
The thing is, like, it would have been a down buy. There's no doubt about it. But, like, my biggest thing with art, because I'm, I am intrigued by it. I want to... I want to have something on the wall that when someone comes in, I can tell them what it means. Mm -hmm. And I don't really know if I could have done that with a popsicle on, on a board, dude. But it looked sick. Art is what you make of it, you know? So that's how I look at it. You know, like someone felt something, saw something, and they made it like that. So that means something to them. But for me to make a purchase like that, I need something that, that draws meaning to me. and. And that's what I'm intrigued by. Everyone has their own strengths, and I think you need to stick to them. Money, money doesn't need to be the, the driving factor in why you step out of your element. You gotta just stay in your lane, man. You can't be swerving around everywhere. It's dangerous. Especially nowadays with social media everywhere, cameras everywhere. Dude, social media is, is, is powerful. You know, I've seen how it can be positive, and I've seen how it can be negative, but it's a big part of everyone's life. But. You know, if you make it positive, a lot a lot of good can come from it. So, I mean, I I definitely enjoy getting on social media from time to time. When I say time to time, I'm on it every day. Twitter's the best app, man. Like, I can't stay off that. A lot of things that you will tweet or something that you put up on Instagram, there's always a ton of likes. There's always a ton of retweets. You're like the, like, one-line machine. Dude, you got to give it to the fans, though. I mean, if, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't get retweets and likes i mean we got the best fans in baseball so it's all the credit to them for you know wanting to to stay rel or stay up to date with what i'm doing and you know i'm trying to i'm trying to let them stay interactful with me it's cool to to put some content out there that might not necessarily mean a lot to me but to see what it means to other people you know they get fired up anything baseball related so I'm trying to keep them uh, involved in my life so i like doing it and it's also awesome too that you're the one who's doing the tweeting, you're the one who's just being you, authentic, which is important. That's the thing, man, is, is I want to make sure that my tweets match up with how I act in person. You know, I don't want it to be someone looking at me and think that it's not me tweeting. You know, I want to be transparent, I want people to get the real Clint. And, you know, I do some pretty out there things, I say some, some wild things, but, you know, I. I never have any harm by it. I, I, I think I'm funny. People might not think I'm funny, but like, I don't care. So I just, I just try to have fun, man. Overall, it's just, it's just an app. You just gotta use it the right way. It's powerful and it's good and it's bad. It's made everything what it is today. You know I mean? It's one way for everyone to stay in touch with each other. And you know, I wanna keep people up to date and I don't, I'm not the person that's gonna take a picture of the water because I'm sitting next to it, you know, like I don't, I don't necessarily want to everyone to know what I'm doing. I just want them to know my thoughts. I try to drop one-liners, man. The, the more that I write, the, the more of a chance it has of getting spun a different way. I'll throw some cryptic tweets out there. Um, and then sometimes I'll just throw something out there that's maybe like a, an inside joke between me and my friends. Genuinely, I am laughing at everything that is on my Twitter page. That's, or unless it's like me hitting a baseball over Fenway, you know, like <laughs> I, I just try to do things where it's like, wow, like this is, this guy's different. Like he, you, I want you to get the real me. So, you know, that's the goal every time I tweet something. Do you ever go back and look at a tweet or an Instagram post and you're like, oh, I don't like the clarity of that picture, delete. Just clean up the feed a little bit. So it's, it's weird. So I am, way more particular about what is on my Twitter than I am my Instagram. I mean, reality is a, a tough teacher, you know? So you gotta, you gotta be real with what you're putting on your page and know that once you hit the button to send it out there, it's no longer yours. That's the thing, it's, that's, that's how I kinda, you know, try to, to live by my tweets, is just knowing that once I send, it, send that tweet, it's not mine anymore. It can go however anyone wants it. It can be perceived in any way. Hey, that's a good tweet right there. Reality is a tough teacher. She is, man. She'll get you. It's every day, man. Every day you're, you're faced with some kind of situation, so just gotta be smart about it. We're over near Jeter's house, actually, right now, I think. The way that he lives, man, that is the like that's the way that you should live. He just did, he did everything the right way. That's what it comes down to. So he's a great guy for someone like myself to think what would Jeter do before I send that tweet out, you know? Take a note out of the captain's handbook and try to 
be a little more discreet, but it's not me, man. I don't, I don't like to hide what I'm doing. It's just, it's not who I am. It's like those bracelets, WWJD. What would Jeter do? What would Jeet do? <laughs> Everyone dreams of having the career that he had, and with that career comes a lot of money. And, you know, that's, that's awesome, but it's not, that's not what it's about for, for me. You know, I never, I mean, my family had money growing up, but we also went through a tough time where my dad was unemployed for five years. And, you know, that's whenever I was 18 years old. So I know what it's like to, to have money and to not have money. So it's just, it's just a matter of being aware. I was not raised around a ton of money. So I try to, you know, keep that in mind before I purchase a thousand dollar popsicle stick. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta see this thing. Dude, it might not even be a popsicle stick. I think it's a paintbrush, to be honest. <laughs> I don't even know what it is. There was a popsicle stick, and then there was a paintbrush. And I have the paintbrush on my phone, but I wanted them both. But I had to think about those two cats at home, man. The, the popsicle sticks, you could actually like sit them down on the table. Like, they were big. Mm. And all I could think about was that thing costs so much, and Poppy or Phoenix is gonna knock it right off, and it's gonna break. I think the paintbrush hung on the wall, and dude, it's sick. Like, you'll see why I wanted to buy it. You get a man cave, what are you putting in it? My parents did a really good job at making sure that they held on to everything in my life. Like, I have the first home run that I ever hit as a kid. I think it's dated in like 2001 or something like that. You know, I have like all the jerseys of the team that I've played for. I actually got my dad every jersey that I've played in I have them, we have them um, in cases hanging on the wall at my parents' house. At my house, I have uh, my Players Weekend jersey. I've got a lot of really cool awards that I won back in high school that are all at their house. All of my, like on the, the ceiling of my room is shelves of all the home runs that I've hit in my career. Earlier in my career, we've, we've kind of stopped you know, holding on to all of them since I got a little bit older, but. Did you get your first MLB home run ball back? I did, I had to sign, uh, I had to sign a bunch of stuff for the guy that caught it, but those kids were fired up, man. It was, I'm just glad that the right person caught it. it didn't have to come out of pocket for anything. But what do you ask for? Uh, you know, I just, I, right after the game, they were in the dugout, I got to meet, I, he, he was, uh, I think he was the head coach of a Little League team. He was affiliated with the Little League team in some way, but, you know, I just autographed all their, all the baseballs that they had and just took pictures with them and talked to them. It was done the right way. I'm glad the guy, you know, is really, really generous with the fact that that's, that's a very meaningful ball to me. And I, I turned right around and I gave it to my dad. So, you know, no one better to hold on to it than him. He's, he's definitely the, the driving force in why I continue to, you know, try to go out there and, and try to make everybody proud. Sounds like you hit the ball to the right first. I definitely did, man. They were good people for sure. But, but I don't know, man, about, about the man cave. I never, I don't know. I, I'll definitely want a lot of special moments in my professional career in there. I've thought about, you know, trying to get something from Tom Brady. You know, people that play significant roles in, in what I'm trying to, you know, replicate. I want to have a career like theirs. So they're all beasts at everything they do. And, you know, in the back of my head are things that they've said or done. And, and I'm trying to, you know, speak those into existence for myself. So just, just big, big time role models in my life is who I would probably want in my man cave. And, and I'm still trying to develop who those people are. So maybe got to get a few things signed by my dad and put them in there, you know, just <laughs> something to give back to the people. Have you taken advantage of the whole system of being in the big leagues and you got the ball boys running back and forth around like one o'clock in the afternoon, go from clubhouse to clubhouse, mm -hmm. just kind of like swapping the autographs? I got a couple balls signed by, I got one signed by Carlos Correa, Jose Altuve, and George Springer when I debuted in Houston. Um, I didn't even know that I could do it. One of the clubbies just came up and asked if I won anything and I was like, dude, yes. Didn't know that they were going to be the team to beat us out of the playoffs, but it was a big moment for me. Um, I got Nelson, uh, Nelson Cruz and Robinson Cano whenever we were in Seattle, but I think that's about it. You know, I, I don't know how they feel knowing that another player is asking for their autograph. I gotta act the part, man. I'm the, the greatest organization in the world, so it's a look who it is. Is that Greg Bird? Bird! A little segment.
second arm. Little segment right now. <laughs> <laughs> See you, bro. Where's Mr. Delicious? But uh, Mr. Delicious has some swag. He's got. He's got his own like sweater that he wears. You know, he he sleeps in Greg's sweatshirt. So I mean, the guy's living life for a cat that for a cat that gets to travel as much as he does. And he's related to Mr. Bigglesworth, dude. That is crazy. You know, I when he told me that, I was like, all right, dude, you've got a you got a pretty cool cat, man. <laughs> it's got some history in him. I'm anxious to find out how many more people in the Yankees are cat people. You know, I found out that Tommy's mom apparently has 20, 20 cats. Greg has a cat. I have two cats. I want to know how many more people are cat people. There's a lot of cat lovers. You guys could probably have a cat party or cat club. I don't know how many professional athletes are this indulged in cats, but dude, I've got to be I've got to be in some rare company up there. It's, it's fun. I mean, we've been talking about our cat, my cats the whole time, dude. That's how much I love them. So, it's fun. But no, like I said, you know, you gotta, you gotta be a professional at all times of the day, because we're the New York Yankees. You know, we got a lot of guys on the team that are the driving force and why we have so much attention still. You know, everyone did what they did in the past to create this huge cloud of expectations over our head, and we're going to continue to try to do that ourselves for the, the people that are coming up after we're gone. So I'm, I'm honored to be a part of this team because it's, in my opinion, the best team in baseball, but it's also the best guys in baseball too. So it's it's really cool to, to be in the clubhouse. It's, it's a hard clubhouse to be involved in, and, you know, I'm trying to stay there and be a part of something special with these guys. All right, so... A regular day. Mm -hmm. You wake up, brush your teeth, go into the kitchen, grab a, grab a water. You know, I've been trying to to eat more fruits, eat some greens. So, you know, I went to Fresh Kitchen and got this uh, drink. It's called the it's called strawberry chiwi. And so I'm trying to start my mornings off right. Seeing a guy like Tom Brady, who's 40 and he's taking care of his body the way that he is, opens my eyes. Everyone wants to have a long career. And so if I can increase, you know, the longevity of my career by, you know, doing some things differently in my diet, that's what I'm gonna do. And, you know, I'm an entertainer. I have to do what it takes to, to go out in the field and continue to, to make people excited and to ultimately accomplish one goal. So if it means, you know, mixing some, some greens in my diet in the morning, I'm. I'm all for it. I want to be on the field. I don't want to be in the dugout. So throw it all in the blender. Oh man, you got to. It's <laughs> spinach, kale. Oh, I, I'm chard, Swiss chard. I don't know much about greens, man. I, people are gonna learn a lot about me after this, man. And I have never cooked a meal for myself. So you never like grilled a burger no. or no, dude, it's eggs or it's, what about like spaghetti? I'm sorry for everyone that's hearing this, but no, everything you say, it's never been done by me, man. It's one of those things that I just don't even want to attempt. I just, I want my food right there, and I want it now. <laughs> I, I don't have time to sit over and, and cook it myself. It's pathetic. I'm sorry to everyone that's hearing this, but you gotta blame these people for being so smart, for giving us access to all of this stuff. So I've been just going on uh, my, my phone and downloading, you know, Postmates or Uber Eats and, and places that are 15 minutes from my house and I'm calling them and they're bringing food to me, man. I'm, I think it's just a part of, we're so busy every day and the last thing I want to do is go get in my car and drive out, get stuck in traffic and get food, you know, and it's laziness, but we're not lazy people, so. I'm just lazy in that aspect. I do not want to do that. It's just, like I said, it's pathetic to, to say that. Other people cook really good, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to make the most of that. You appreciate others. Yes, I and appreciate And you let them know by eating their meals. Crushing their meals, dude. Love it. So.